What's up guys? Um, today we're gonna be doing a uh, <clears throat> a coolant flush and refill. And this is some of the things you're gonna need. Um, quantities I, I overbuy. Um, the manual says it's got about like four gallons of coolant inside uh, the motor, but I don't know if all that's gonna drain out or, or whatever. So I don't know if I'm gonna need all this, but we're gonna find out. Um, so the basic premise behind what we're doing today is I'm going to pump out the coolant. It's a it's a, a flush and a refill. So I'm going to pump out the coolant that's in this reservoir. I'm going to open the petcock on the bottom of the radiator, drain out that, and then I'm going to fill up the radiator with water. And then I'm going to um, fill the coolant reservoir with water up to the uh, full line on the reservoir. Don't fill it all the way to the top, um, because that'd be bad. Um, and then we'll run the water for a while. Once the water, you turn on the heat inside, let it circulate through the engine. Let, once you're, uh, you know it'll be circulating once your fan turns on. Once your fan kicks on and your and your vehicle gets to normal temperature, it'll start circulating the water. And then after it circulated the water for about five minutes, we're gonna cut it off. We're gonna drain all the uh, the water out. Um, pump out the reservoir, turn the petcock on the radiator, get all the water out, and then we're gonna put all our new stuff in. Um, with this, I've got a pretty neat little funnel system that's gonna allow me to um, put it on the top and fill my coolant in the reservoir while the engine's running, or the new stuff, while the engine's running, and it'll burp the system on its own because the that uh, uh, funnel's actually gonna fit on here tight uh on the cap so and then once i do that once this is filled all the way top and the coolant reservoir is at the fill at the full line um and it's done letting out the air bubbles then we'll be good and we can plug the uh plug the funnel close the cap and uh i think we turn turn the engine off take the funnel out put the cap back on um but yeah, that's basically what's going to happen, so. Right, we're going to get started here. First things first, we're going to pump out all this fluid in the reservoir. Right. Make sure you guys have one of those uh, big four and a half gallon pans for this because it's going to be a decent amount of fluid for sure. So now you're going to get up under here and find your pet cot. All right, so not every vehicle has a device such as this, but most vehicles have um, something like this that you can unscrew. Um, for some, you're gonna have to, some of them don't have this at all. You're gonna have to pull off this uh, radiator hose in order to drain the radiator. But for mine, this should be, should be able to twist it a little bit until that fluid starts coming out. And make sure your pan's right underneath it. Should be able to twist it. Yep, see that fluid starts coming out. And just don't, don't twist this cap all the way out because then the fluid will just shoot out this way. So you just want to twist it just enough until it starts dripping out. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I don't know if it can. There we go. That's that's about that's about all it can do. So, but uh, what I did was I went and I bought uh, Mopar concentrate, um, and then I mixed it in my uh, my pan. I just got I just got my pan like brand new um, a few days ago, so it had no fluid in it. Like no oil had ever been uh, dumped in it. So I literally just took a gallon of this and a gallon of distilled water, 
poured them together and then poured them back in containers. And uh, now these are perfectly mixed, 50-50, um, half and half, half uh, distilled water, half uh, antifreeze uh, coolant. Uh, specifically, this is specifically for this vehicle, for a, uh, a Dodge, a 2005 Dodge, uh, Dodge, I believe it says, what? Fiat, Alfa Romeo, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, stuff like that. So, so that's what it's for. Um, so yeah, this, this vehicle does not take the standard antifreeze coolant mixture that you could buy just at Walmart or O'Reilly brand stuff. Um, because it's an iron, it's a cast iron block, engine block, but I think the heads are aluminum or something like that. And um, so it needs this special uh, mix so that it doesn't break down the aluminum components, I believe. Something to that effect. I'm not like totally versed on the science of it, but I just know that they, I just know it has a special, it's got a special reason for why to use that. So I'm gonna need to get a container for all this old stuff. So while that's draining out, I'm gonna go get that and then I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so I got tired of it and I took off the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm tired of waiting. So yeah. Hey, hey, it's starting to stop, thank God. Praise. I didn't know how long I was going to be sitting here for. Are you done yet? Eh. Let me show my poor ass. Shit, annoying as hell. Take forever to freaking drain out. Damn. Still got to freaking flush this thing. And then put new stuff in and then burp the system at the same time. Ooh. Okay. Get this water up here. All right. So first things first. According to this, I'm supposed to fill up the radiator. I'll get back to you guys once um, once we get to the third phase, which will be draining out the distilled water. So. Hi guys. So after you've let your heat, um, so once your your vehicle's up at operating temperature and you let it run for five minutes, um, you let your heat run. Um, so it's all about heat. And so we're gonna cut that off, and we're going to cut the engine off. And you're gonna want to let it sit. I'd say you're gonna want to let the vehicle sit for about 30 minutes before you take that cap off. Uh, the fluid's still gonna be hot, but at least if you let it sit for about 30 minutes, there won't be a whole lot of pressure behind it. Um, so just be just be wary that the fluid in the top of that radiator is gonna be warm slash hot whenever you open the cap. So, because I got, I think I got a little bit on my hand whenever I took it off, but I had gloves on, so I was good. So. <clears throat> All 
All right, so phase three, we're gonna pump out the distilled water from the reservoir into the pan. And uh, once it's done draining out, we'll go on to uh, the last step of the entire process that seems to take forever, um, which is putting all the new stuff in. And then after you put the new coolant in, you're good to go. So, we'll be back. All right, guys, so we're about to put our, our good stuff, our new stuff in. So first we're gonna go to the reservoir. Here we're gonna fill this reservoir up to the full line. I'm gonna turn on my little hat light so I can kind of see a little bit. I'm trying to see where this uh there it is. I see the fluid. It's be kind of hard for you guys to see it. But... That's it. Right up to where it says full. And then I'm gonna switch over to here. This is nice and snug, nice and tight on here because that's gonna be that's gonna be a big thing for uh, since the system's got pressure on it whenever you turn the vehicle on. And you're just gonna fill this until it can't take anymore. Philly, Philly. Okay, at some point you will get to this stage where there are no more. Well, well that was just me. I'm doing this. I'm doing this right now um, to kind of help burp the system. But you'll get to a point where, you know, no more, no more bubblies. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take some more since mine's kind of low in the funnel right now. And you're gonna put more in. Uh, fill up the funnel about, uh, right there's pretty good. Hey, you guys remember this stuff's really toxic, uh, so don't get it on your hands. Um, obviously go inside and wash your hands after this. We're gonna do that, we're gonna start her up. We're gonna let some of those uh, air bubbles kind of work themselves out. You can see right now some of these air bubbles are starting to come out. They're starting to bu bubble up. And so what, what you're doing right now is you're, you're burping the system. So you're getting some of that air out of those lines so that all of your coolant lines have just coolant in them and not air. Because obviously you don't want air. And then once that the level starts to drop more, we'll just add more in. Or once the bubbles stop, there shouldn't be too many bubbles. We're gonna let it get up to temperature. 
So, so basically right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the engine get back up to operating temperature. And then once it gets back up to operating temperature, I notice that there's no more air bubbles. I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna plug this with this thing and put it back in a container. And then uh, once the truck shut off, I'll take my radiator cap and I'll just put it back on and we'll be done. So stay tuned. Hi right, guys, so it's at operating temperature and there's no more air bubbles. So I'm gonna shut it off and pull this out and then put that cap back on. <laughs> 